Welcome to Mission Sunlight Chat from the Media Missionaries of Network 7 Media Center. Ordinarily, I tell you, we're in our world headquarters located in Chattanooga, Tennessee, in the United States of America. Wherever you are listening, we welcome you. But I can't say that today. We are in the U.S. for sure, but we're in the central state of Kansas City, Missouri. And we are at ASI, and ASI is Adventist Layman Services and Industry, the laity of the Seventh-day Adventist Church who are working to share the gospel, to tell others about Jesus, working hand-in-hand with the church organization. And here at ASI in the exhibit hall, you can hear people talking around us. You'll uh, hear things come over the platform you'll, or over the PA system. You'll hear people over at uh, a music booth singing, just different things happening in the background behind us. So as we talk, keep your ears uh, focused in on what we have to say in our Mission Sunlight Chat edition today. My name is Christopher Beeson. Our Director of Production and Engineering today is Jordan Wagner. Mission Sunlight Chat is a nonprofit Christian media organization. So if you'd like to know more, visit us at missionsunlight.org. And if you want to give, you can click donate. Donate. Thank you for whatever you're led to give. We appreciate your prayers, your money, any combination of these. We are truly grateful for you. One more thing before we get into today's program, we need to grow. So in order to uh, touch more lives for Jesus, to share the story of Jesus, to spread the truth as it is in Jesus, please, if you can't give your time, you can't give your prayers, you can't give your monies, would you consider sharing the link to today's program with a friend or even an enemy? Post it on your social media, text it to a friend right now, even snail mail it if you want. Share Mission Sunlight Chat today. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Our guest today, John Wood from Jesus for Asia. Yes. John, thanks for being here today. I appreciate uh, the opportunity to brag on Jesus. Tell us, what is this ministry, Jesus for Asia? Um, we started back in 2005. Mm-hmm. I was uh, teaching at uh, Pacific Union College, and uh, during that time, I had uh, taken a short-term mission trip with uh, 3EBN and uh, and a couple other people that uh, did a large evangelistic series in India. I saw 40,000 people sitting on the ground listening to an evangelistic campaign, and I learned that 30 to 40 percent of all people in India would accept Jesus if somebody would tell them. And you're talking 1.4 billion people, uh, 30 to 40 percent of that. It's a mm-hmm. very large number. And so I started when I got back home. I spent the next several years chewing through in my mind. If it was up to me, how would I do that? How would I? And the passion started to grow in my heart, and ambition started to grow in my heart. That you know, um, I want to see as many people saved as possible before Jesus comes. And, you know, I'm satis- we should be satisfied with one or two because Jesus would have, would have poured out his life for one or two souls. But when there are thousands, Amen. millions, hundreds of millions available and wanting to learn about Jesus, man, let's maximize this as much Amen. as possible. And so we started learning, you know, the Lord started teaching us about living by faith. Uh, about the principles of faith yes and so in 2004 I says we're just gonna launch out by faith and we're gonna do this ministry and I had come up with a great ministry to do and my wife started to freak out she I'm like where's your faith and she says I think you're doing what you want to do I don't think you've surrendered this to God and I'm like she might have a point okay. so um, had a great plan had a great vision had a great heart desire desire to serve God but it's kind of like if I came to you Jordan and started sweeping your 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 um, sidewalk and and, and and raking your yard and then without asking you at the end of the month just expected you to pay me you probably would wouldn't you know and so I realized I was doing that with God I was like hiring on to him wanting to serve him without really asking him what he wanted me to do and so I spent the next six months, morning, noon, and night. Lord, I want to serve you. I want to work for you. But mm-hmm. I want what I do for you to come from you and not from my head. Yes. And at the end of that six months, um, he communicated to me in a very clear way, stay where you are. Hmm. And so I had to surrender. Do I want to serve him or do I want to be in his will? And sometimes you would think serving him would be in his will, but it was my ideas of what I wanted to do for him. In other words, I wanted to launch out and like be this independent, you know, serve him directly. But he told me to stay there. He wanted my surrender. So I surrendered and said, okay, yeah. had that peace. And then he started to build what is now Jesus for Asia. 
kind of on the side and we're looking at this thing and it's kind of growing up and I'm like, um, honey, you want to do this full time? And she's like, sure. She went for it. And so I, I realized I decided because it wasn't just your idea. It's what, uh, what the Lord was doing. Exactly. Yeah. God brought us together that we were completely united on our, on what we were going to do mm-hmm. and where we we're going to live. And so I, I kind of figured out that if I went over as a missionary, which is what I wanted to do, then I would do the work of a missionary, of one missionary family. Mm -hmm. But if we started a project that would support other missionaries, then we could multiply our efforts. Um, Also, she found a book um, that was highlighting and describing the effectiveness of the local missionary, the national missionary. And so that's what we did. We started out by sponsoring local missionaries, and they were so successful and people started getting on board that we decided to do this full time and mm-hmm. so we surrendered our res- turned in a resignation in March and then in June we moved to Idaho as the miracle started happening and we camped out on Matthew 6:33 which we're still camping out on and uh, the Lord's been good for the last what has it been that's 18 years now the Lord has provided and it's Amen. been amazing Jesus for Asia was born about the same time that Network 7 Media Center was. Cool. And um, so in 2005, we launched that ministry. And so it's it's interesting to hear your journey, how God has blessed. And God has certainly uh, been a blessing to us. And it's nice that uh, we can collaborate. Yes. Um, we're going to take a break here in a moment or for a moment. And I just want to remind our viewers at home, missionsunlight.org is a place where you can learn more and you can give there. We want to ask you, please share the link today to today's program or the entire show podcast platform with a friend. You can text it, social media, even email. Take a moment right now during the break to share it with someone. We'll be right back with more Mission Sunlight Chat. Welcome back to Mission Sunlight Chat. My guest, John Wood from Jesus for Asia. John, thanks again for being a part and sharing a little of the history of Jesus for Asia. A moment ago, I said, you know, Network 7 Media Center, our parent organization with Mission Sunlight Chat, began in 2005 as well. Similar time frame as Jesus for Asia. And uh, we've been in uh, the community that we're in together for some time mm-hmm. in, in Tennessee. And we're both really pleased to be a part of the ASI community and the ASI yes. family. Yes, it's been um, a huge blessing. There is something valuable about uh, being part of the organizations of laity yes. that are moving the gospel forward. Yeah. Um, Ellen White told us that we had to work hand in hand with the church, that the laity needed to join hands with the ministry, the pastor in the pulpit and do God's work. It yes. shouldn't just be to the apostle or the, the pastor or, or whatever. It's not just a paid work, but uh, the laity can come along side. And so that's what we're doing. That's why we have ministries like ASI. Um, why, why is Jesus for Asia? I mean, I tell you the philosophy that we want to work alongside the church, but why is Jesus for Asia here at ASI and why are you a member of ASI? Well, we, um, uh, I came to ASI several times before we started our ministry. Mm-hmm. Uh, when I was teaching at PUC, we came down and, and uh, interacted with uh, the booths and looked around. And it's just, there's something inspiring that's it's like an intangible mm-hmm. about being around people that really want to see the gospel go forward and are doing innovative, different ways of doing it. And you walk around and... and um, and uh, you see people, you know, really going for it. It inspires you and, and, and motivates you and challenges you to, to do that. And, and then you develop a network of friends. Of course, we've been coming to ASI for maybe almost 25 years. You know, the first one, I think, was in 2000, 2001 or something. Mm-hmm. And our first booth was in 2005 when we went, we drove right. all the way down 
from uh, Idaho to Sacramento and, and went to the local Home Depot and bought some plywood and we're out in the parking lot with a handsaw cutting up our creating, creating our booth. booth. Yes. <laughs> We've done similar things. <laughs> yes, we have. <laughs> But um, by, there's by God's grace, this trip, we brought a truck and a trailer. I think this is the most material we've ever brought and set up our, our small studio here wow. in our booth next door. Yeah, it's really our display impressive. next door. So it's it's a lot of fun. ASI stretches us, doesn't it? <laughs> it does. It does. But then you over the course of the years, you develop friends. So we're coming back yeah. and, and they become there's certain times like uh, times when we're going through really tough times mm -hmm. when it's amazing how they our friends rally around and really build up our other, faith. Other ASI ministries are encouragers. Mm -hmm. They're idea resourcers. Mm -hmm. um, what else could you say about them? Just Collaborators. To, yeah. Yeah. Yep. It's places where you, hey, you know, you're working in this area, so am I. Hey, how can we work together uh, to make a bigger impact? And um, it's, it's a beautiful thing. So you'd encourage someone who's never been to ASI, may not have a ministry, check it out? Absolutely. Absolutely. Like, like what, and, and, and not just to do ministry, but to see what God might call them to do that Amen. they would not only be good at, but enjoy mm -hmm. and enhance their life. You know, we all need purpose, right? We don't live without purpose. And so doing a ministry for God that's vital, that's going to save some, possibly bring somebody into the kingdom, gives you purpose. So your ministry is called Jesus for Asia. Give mm -hmm. me the elevator speech. Tell me what Jesus for Asia in a practical, tangible way is doing on a daily basis for the kingdom. Okay, well, Asia, number one, a lot of people say, why just Asia? Asia is 57% of the world's population. Ni over 90% of all unreached people groups live in Asia. So it's the greatest need. And so we wanted to find the greatest need and try to move that direction. Mm -hmm. And so um, we started out with just national Bible workers. That's all we did. We said, we're just going to do one project. Now we've Was got this one country? One country, one project. We started out as Jesus for India. And a couple of years into that, we expanded to Jesus for Asia uh, to include Cambodia, Thailand originally. And then now we've gone to about eight countries. But um, we do pretty much anything that we think is going to ex extend the gospel kingdom. So um, we have direct projects where we sponsor them directly, uh, like our Bible workers in India, Bangladesh, Philippines, Cambodia, Thailand, Indonesia. And then we have uh, our friends started saying, hey, you know, we, we'd like to get involved with missions. You know, how can we become missionaries? And, and we're like, well, buy a plane ticket, go there. And so they'd go there and, um, and they became, they started doing stuff that was amazing. They're all living by faith, Matthew 6.33, just like we were, are. And they're uh, inspiring. And so uh, we do missionaries, I mean, uh, cross-cultural missionaries. We do local missionaries. We do evening schools for children, uh, especially in India, where they have a hard time getting an education and getting enough food to eat. So we provide tutoring in the, after, in the evening with a free meal. We've got about 51 of those, uh, feeding about 1,500 kids per night, and that's exciting. That's totally cool. And then we have television in South India, Indonesia, and uh, the Philipp uh, um, in Thailand. We have two s new, brand new TV studios developing content in, uh, in Thailand. So, But you've also got some domestic work you're doing, training. Yeah, we, um, we do these faith camps. Yep. Uh, camp meetings that bring the missionaries that started out just as normal people and they go over there by you know, God's call and they see miracles happen they, they, they learn to depend on God they come back with amazing faith stories and they share them in our camp meetings we do camp meetings where people can come and be inspired you know um, even if you're not going to go overseas you know everybody can use more faith and, and be encouraged by miracle stories Amen. Yeah. Wow. So this year we've done, we did four in the winter. Uh, we've, we've got one more to go. We're just right now finishing up the seventh, and I think we've got one more to go. So we're doing 12 of those this year. So it's been, it's been intense, but the Lord's been pouring out His Spirit, and revival's happening in churches. Even pastors are getting revived, and people are getting new visions of what they can do locally as well as overseas. It's totally cool. So how can people connect with Jesus for Asia? Our website, uh, jesusforasia.org. Jesusforasia.org is the best way. You can call us at 423-413-7321. Uh, 
um, those are two good ways to get in touch with us. Okay. What about social media? Uh, yeah, we're on Facebook. We are on YouTube. We have a YouTube channel, Jesus Frazier. Um, we also have a TV channel, a streaming channel, missiontv.com. So you can go there, and uh, we've had a guy recently that might be launching into a, into a sensitive country that when he was sitting in his office one day and the word missions floated through his brain, and he's like, where'd that come from? And then the next week, he was downloading an app, and he saw Mission TV. So he started binge watching Mission TV, watched 30 hours of Faith Camp. And now he's inspired, he's, he's getting ready to launch into Iraq, Amen. where he came from, he was delivered from there 50 years ago. And now he has a heart to go back and see what he can do for his people. Amen. Wow, <laughs> that's a great story. We hope you're being encouraged and blessed by listening to the program today. We have more to come, but we need to take a break. So remember, you can give at missionsunlight.org. And you can share this program with anyone right now. Thank you for doing one or both. We'll be back with more Mission Sunlight Chat. Our salvation is a day-to-day -day matter, isn't it? The real principle of the Sabbath is reconnecting ourselves with the Creator. We must learn to abide in Jesus now. We move ahead with our mission objectives, recognizing that we are serving together the Most High God. Welcome back to Mission Sunlight Chat. John Wood from Jesus for Asia. Thanks so much for joining us today. John, um, I've just recently in the past couple of weeks driven by your new facility there in uh, Collegedale, Tennessee. Mm. Um, discovered it quite by accident. I was visiting a friend at the uh, long-term healthcare facility across the street from you and went, whoa, they've moved. <laughs> and it's quite a beautiful, impressive facility outside. God is truly blessing. Uh, yep. For those of you that are not uh, or are familiar with the Collegedale area, it's just uh, up from Four Corners. Mm -hmm. Um, not far at all. Um, right across the head from the Korean church. Yep. yep. Tell us what's next. Um, so this uh, building was uh, God's idea. Uh, I, was, I took a week of prayer. I mean, a full week, you know, 24-7 prayer, praying. And during that time, God gave, gave, you know, impressed me that we're not doing enough. And we were, and, and so he's, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about ministry stability, ministry growth. He's thinking about mission completion you know uh three four three or four billion people still need to know need yes. to hear the gospel so um i told god it's like you know we need we need a bigger office we were in a 400 square foot office downstairs in the basement and uh ran out of parking and all that kind of stuff so um we we spent the next couple of years looking all over the place we have found a, a couple of units in a strip mall in uh, Udawa and we were a few hours from signing a three-year mm -hmm. contract with that and I says okay God this is my solution what's your idea and I felt impressed to drive around came down that road Swinier and saw that piece of property sitting there and I thought you know this is way too expensive but if it was up to me that's where I'd go and so we called the uh, the owner developer is a build to suit by faith and um and at that time that year our donations were way up we had money in the bank we had you know several things that we could see that this could work right um he was very he, he was very protective of that piece of property and uh so he but he let us he, he was very interested in working with us and so we moved forward by faith uh the following year um our donations were down our, we had no more money in the bank. Uh, every single human method we have to attain that building was taken away. I had one thing left, the Word of God. Yes. And that's like I went through some serious testing trials about just on my faith. Can I really, can, I mean, faith is a great concept until you have to stand on it, until everything depends on it. And then it becomes a real challenge. Is the Word of God really, really, for me, for my ministry is it secure and um can we bank on it and um 
we were driving home. My wife and I were driving home one day, and, and we went to the Lord. It's like it was, you know, it's trigger time. They, were, they, they pulled all the permits, ready to build. Um, it's now or never, and, and, and we went to the Lord, and, and the Lord spoke to my wife in her mind, uh, arise and build. And then another verse, I forgot what it was. I, I let her tell this part usually, but it's like, uh, uh, our God will prosper us, therefore we, his servants, will arise and build. Yeah. And so it was like a clear, and so we, yeah, we said yes. And so they started building in November. We hadn't purchased the property yet. Started building in November. By April, middle of April, they were finished with a 9,000 square foot building with all the, you know, parking and landscaping and everything done. Uh -huh. We bought the property, we paid for the property about, well, they're about 70% complete with mm -hmm. the building. And Amen. so we're looking at this and we're thinking, okay, God doesn't give us a tool just to enjoy. There's a plan, there's a vision that he has. And I don't know specifically what that is, but I do know that it includes more managers, more, pe more project managers, more growth, and his heart is for Asia. Not just for Asia, but his heart is for the unreached. Amen. And so now we're looking at going into unreached, you know, literally unreached. I praise God that our church is in 925 languages in the world. There's only 6,000 languages to go, you know? So if we keep entering into the new languages at the rate that we're entering now, it'll take 600 years. Wow. And so things have to change. And so we're looking where we're, we've discovered the Lord has led us into new ways of entering new areas. That's very successful. And so we're, we're, we're moving and we're just praying like, Lord, what, what do you want us to do? How do you want us to work this way? Tell us some, uh, some, some stories of Jesus for Asia. Okay. All right. One of our Bible workers in um, Mindoro, Philippines, he... Um, he was called to uh, a man who was dying of tuberculosis. Mm -hmm. And um, <clears throat> uh, he was there, and his, his wife was there, his two kids were there, and um, he asked the wife, he's like, do you believe in Jesus? Uh, if you believe in Jesus, then God can raise, you, raise your husband, you know, heal your husband. And she did not believe in Jesus, and she didn't want to, and so uh, the man died. Mm. Um, just passed out, stopped breathing, his body went cold, stiff, uh, didn't breathe for two hours. And he just, you know, everybody was get preparing the body for a funeral because, you know, you bury him quick in the, in the tropics. And, um, um, and, but he kept saying, you know, don't bury him yet. You know, God's, God can raise this guy from the dead. If you really, if you believe in Jesus, he can raise him from the dead. Now, yeah. no, I, if I was there, I, I'd like, okay, well, you know, we missed the opportunity. He, he died and that's mm. too bad. And we'll just bury him. But this Bible worker was just persistent and he trusted God. And finally, after two hours of this guy being dead, his wife says, okay, I believe in your Jesus. If your Jesus raises my husband from the dead, I will serve him. Mm. And so he, he uh, went to the Holy Spirit, went to the Father, and, and sensed that it was his will. And so he prayed. This guy's name is Mar. The Bible worker's name is Pablito. So Pablito prayed for Mar to be resurrected from the dead. And <laughs> Mar jumps up, kind of moves around and says, Whoa, this is strange. I'm not sick anymore. I'm completely well. Mm. And I have all this on video. I have both of their testimonies, Pablito talking about it and, the, and, and Mar talking about it. He says he was sleeping, he was, you know, sleeping and he saw a bright light come in and that's what raised him from the dead. Uh -huh. And uh, now he says, you know, I was living before, now I have a second chance, now this is my, sec this is my opportunity to serve God. Yeah. And so there was not only a raising from the dead physically, but a raising from the dead spiritually. Amen. And now he's serving God. And so our Bible workers inspire us like crazy. Amen. Wow. We uh, are going to have to wrap up, but um, maybe there's just an encouraging word you want to share with our listeners and viewers just uh, as, we, as we finish. Sure. Yeah. Um, I just want to encourage everybody, you know, no matter who you are, no matter what your skill set is, that giving God your passions, your dreams, your, your careers, your time, your effort, your creativity, uh, he can turn everything into gold. And he can take you, all your skills, and maximize you so that you are most blessed, you are most, ma you are most fulfilled, 
and that others are blessed and, fu and fulfilled also. Um, Jesus is the biggest blessing that we can give to people. Um, and so I just want to encourage, you know, God will take anybody. And mm -hmm. I think that's what ASI represents is yes. this movement of lay people, normal people, regular Joe Blow, standard bread, you know, milk toast uh, Adventists that want to serve God and encourages them. Let's, let's all do this together because everybody doing their part, then something's got to change. So, yeah. Well, you know, and, and something has to change right. in order for mission completion to happen. Mm -hmm. You know, if if one person doesn't do his full part, then there's that missing link. There's that missing thing. Amen. And, you know, a lot of people say, well, God's going to finish the work one way or another. It's like, well, he might wrap it up in the future. But what about the people we could have reached right now if we were doing what we could do right now? What if, what about them? You know, and a lot of times we pray, Lord, please come soon so that I can go home. What about the people that don't know Jesus? When Jesus comes the second time, that's game over for them. So I'm praying, Lord, please pour out your spirit so that we can reach our inheritance, that we can claim our inheritance. You know, Psalms 2.8, ask of me and I shall give thee the heathen for an inheritance. Mm -hmm. They're our inheritance. You know, we think that our inheritance is heaven. Jesus left heaven to, to, to gain his inheritance, to, to win people back. Amen. And so the, the heathen, the, the unreached, those that don't know who their father is, that's our inheritance. Amen. So. Thank you for sharing that, John. As we close, would you have a word of prayer for us, and our to. listeners and viewers? Yeah. Father God, I just want to praise your holy name. You are a good God. You're a good father. You're a perfect father. And your plan for your church, your plan for each individual listening here and for everybody father is to join you in your noble cause of saving souls this gives us purpose in life this gives us joy this gives us something to wake up for in the morning that's more than just making money and surviving and so father i ask for your holy spirit to touch each person's heart father that we can hear your voice and and that will give us give us a moment to, to consider what you might be e asking each of us to do and not shut it down not shut down that still small voice or that idea. You, you plant ideas in our minds of ways that we can creatively serve you to reach Amen. our fellow men. And so, Father, I praise you for ASI. I praise you for Network 7. I praise you for Mission Sunlight Chat. I just ask for your blessing upon this whole ministry and especially those that are leading this. And, Father, we praise your holy name. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. That is today's program from the Media Missionaries of Network 7 Media Center. This has been Mission Sunlight Chat with our guest, John Wood, from Jesus for Asia. I'm Christopher Beeson, your host and today's engineer, director of production, Jordan Wagner. Thank you for joining us. We thank you for sharing our show with uh, friends via text, email, or on your social media platforms. We also thank you for your gifts and your prayers, but especially your prayers. That's all today from our mobile studio here at ASI in the Exhibit Hall in Kansas City, Missouri. We're glad to be coming to you from ASI, and we appreciate you joining us. This is Mission Sunlight Chat.